say Igona. I say Igona. Uh, the question is, how much pain you have in Igona is seen by your life, by your actions? And uh, through my years of ministry and being just planting, this is a third church, and this is the hardest. And I've uh, been uh, observing many people, and many people come and go, and of course, we're able to retain uh, this number, maybe uh, 60 more people. And then, of course, the result of zero, right? But I think we will grow a bit faster in the days to come, huh? right? So, and, uh, so anyway, uh, we have faith in God that we will move to a different place because this is from Chautauqua, we move here. From Chautauqua, we move, move uh, to uh, Causeway Point, then we went to Master and Partner, and then we went to Dakrosby, and this is the fifth place that we have in to Sabawa. And we still need to move to a bigger place, all right, the days to come. And then we see how the Lord is from there. A bigger place means hopefully we can use that kind of place for service, all huh? right, and then we you know hopefully we can grow further. All right, so when pray, pray along with me and pray for Mr. Philip in some areas, and uh, hopefully, you know, he got so many buildings, right, so many property, and then uh, he can help us today, and then nearby here, the good ones, all right, and then uh, we can grow. I think the next move is very important that we do uh, faster and invite more people. Right? Okay. So the location is around here. Okay, either I here is a second choice, there's another one here. There's a uh, okay, the one can be five thousand square feet, five thousand square feet. Of course, if you go to the other one, the commercial place uh, is nearby here. Is uh, so we are aiming for at least five thousand square feet. Okay, if we have faith, seven thousand <laughs> Square feet, uh, these two combined is 3,000, three, about 3,500 square feet we have this combined these two places. I thought we only for 40%. 40 huh? So let's require faith. I believe it's not impossible when we have the faith, we started from $1.40 and we shift here, we spend another thousand. Right? So the Lord has blessed us along the way, huh? miraculously, and how the Lord helps within each and beyond this church. Huh? So we believe that the next move is very critical, very important. Of course, the you now we are just, uh, still moving the view, okay? We are here, 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 here. So pray along with us that uh, God will bring in all the partners. I think the best, the best thing in the entire world is to build God's internal kingdom. All right, that's why the zeal, that the Lord said the zeal of God consumed in us. That means he has to build the spiritual kingdom. And that is the internal kingdom. All of us, the true believers. Alright, so today I want to share with you about the faith in God. Okay, let's look at the text in deep, chapter 4, verse 14. Okay, at least the background is Jesus Christ went through the three temptations and then after that he successfully overcame them. And that's where we connect to this verse. And Jesus uh, returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. You know, uh, to this life journey of uh, the, the wilderness 40 years that the Israel went through and many died. In fact, almost all of them except Caleb and Joshua. Right? And then similarly, on uh, this contact, when you come to know Jesus Christ, huh? okay? And then the Jesus, before he entered into the ministry, huh? and then he was uh, tempted by Satan. Huh? Okay, so same thing, yeah, when you become a Christian, you're subjected to testing. Huh? Uh, and then there's a lot of distraction and Satan will come in to disturb you and many die. Just like those die in the wilderness. So many Christians, uh, they want to believe in Jesus and they die along the way. Alright, and so they start to embrace other faith, some went back to the world like demons, some like children in Syria betray Jesus. Even he's so close with Jesus. Uh. And actually the issue is the heart. Okay? The heart is the uh, most important. But we I think we need hundreds of people to Jesus Christ, students around there. But they come and go. Okay, they don't stay. Like the Bible says there are four categories of people. One is uh, along the path where they have no uh, real understanding. There's one category where they don't come and uh, disturb them and they lost their, uh, their salvation. The second category is the amount of God where they don't have depth of understanding. And these are the category of people who face trouble and persecution and give up their faith. And third category of people were those who fell among the horns. Huh? And they are cares of this line and the worries and the pursuits of the wealth of this world and they also fall apart. And only the last category that we make is the uh, 
good soil and the noble heart and to remain in God's kingdom. And out of those who come into the world, only to the percent for that category. But on the whole, on the narrow way, even uh, less than 10 percent in the world as you see. Even a 10 is too many, right? So the narrow gate itself is a hard to go in and is uh, not many. So, but we only want true believers because we do not want uh, believers, uh, like you know, the son of Stephen, they come and play game, okay, and they don't trust in Jesus. And then we, we, we tell them, okay, if you uh, don't know Jesus, then this place is not for you, alright? So we don't want people who are not serious for God. We want people to be here to honor God, to build God's kingdom together. But very frankly, then I spoke with them, uh, especially the other one who spoke to me three times, and taught me three lessons uh, about Jesus. Uh, I said no, then in that case it's really not for me. Right? It's very fair. Right? We do it very professionally. Right? We speak the truth to you, we show you the scripture, you still say no. Right? Then it's okay. It is fine with us because this is God's church, God is building the church, and God will bring in his people. And it's not our church, it's not our painting, or not our way, but God's way. Right? So we have to be very clear in this uh, area. So today our topic is about faith. Right? So when he came back for overcoming the temptation, he was very powerful. So same thing, a Christian who successfully uh, went through temptation, or they become very strong. Right? It's either they die or they become very strong. Right? Okay. So uh, all right. So he came in the power of the spirit and news about his spread to the world, huh? and he was teaching in the synagogue, and everybody praised him. He went to the synagogue. That's where he was born. Not was born when he grew up in born in Bethlehem, but he grew up in a small little town, a very obscure, unknown town, and when he was brought from a humble setting. So when we start just starting it's a really uh, humble setting, we start from so trust of bringing all the instruments and today the Lord has blessed with position and all that over the years. And so it takes time to grow the church. So God choose a poor to be rich in fear and in James, right? So uh, so we thank God that we are here today, right, and we are still growing, and uh, this is a humble beginning. I believe that we will try, we will succeed uh, in the days to come because we are doing better and better, uh, okay, as the Lord's willing, in the days to come, we do more. Because when we first started the church, we were a and then you know, my children are not small, right? My Esther is playing the keyboard, and then my son, not 26 years old, will be another three, alright? So over the years, uh, and then we grow. Okay, from uh, zero to where we are today, combining with the year and China we are 60 old people, but we all come. Right? So we're looking forward to, to break through to 100 months and uh, 100, 100 people. I think it's not possible if everybody bring, uh, each person bring one person or two person, uh, and at the same time we do evangelism. Alright? So and then so when he was brought up and on the seventh day he went to the synagogue. Okay, he stood up and read the scroll, right? And verse 18, there's a prophecy from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he reminded me to proclaim the good news to the poor. So the gospel is for those who are spiritually hungry and spiritually poor. Alright? Whether you are rich or poor, as long as you are spiritually hungry for God's word, then you are the target. And he sent me to proclaim the freedom for the prisoners. Uh, those who are not in prison, but those who are become slave to Satan or imprisoned by Satan, okay, and uh, they, are, they, are, they are prisoner of Satan, we, they, they can be set free, yeah? and recover your sight, I mean, you can physically kill them and open their spiritual eye, and to set your press free from Satanic power, huh? addition, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor of his salvation. Alright, so the question is, is that how come they are a lot of Christians, and a lot of Christians, they are not set free. They are slaves to addiction, they say to bondages, and uh, you know, they are, they are slaves to, to many, many, uh, under the, the, the stronghold of Satan, uh, and they are not set free. Why is that so? Uh? Alright? So, okay, uh, alright? Why is that so they are not set free? Okay, maybe we have a general uh, asking. Uh, okay, I hope you're not offended. Huh? Uh, if you don't have any other things to interact with you, then you can go and share the answer. Like my, I think I always, uh, you know, I'm pushing, why people are not 
not set free yeah, from the other uh, pictures. Okay, it is great right? because we, we started the queue from zero. We go together, right? A lot of people need to help. Huh? So they are not set free because they disobey God. 
the rain, and they go on to teach on and they sin, and they become a slave to sin, and they will lie, they will lie full of lies, and full of vulgarity, and full of lust, and full of all problems, right? So, and they're not saying, before as Christian, God will give you the wisdom, and give you the power, and give you the love to do the things He wants you to do. You can do it because you have the power of Jesus. Amen? Okay, then, he wrote the scroll. Okay, let's keep. And then, but also, okay, today, and then he said, uh, today the scripture is fulfilled. Alright, and all spoke well on him and were amazed with the gracious word that came from his lip. And that, isn't it is the Joseph's son, huh? uh, Joseph the carpenter's son? Huh? You know, uh, here, uh, okay, let's look at he's a carpenter's son. Okay. In life, uh, we must be able to be very objective. Okay, okay. Uh, another question of uh, teaching, uh, like this case. Uh, So my question is, 
the content history versus uh, from the honor is not only useful. Um, so, and, and uh, there's so many widow, uh, and user is not asking Elijah to go back. Uh, when to ask him to go uh, to the widow in Jerusalem, uh, that's one. And also, and, uh, there's so many lepers uh, in Israel that uh, uh, was not killed uh, except for the uh, wife. So why, why the, the Bible talks about this? Uh, how does it connect the uh, prophet is not under his own town through the widow and through the leper? Right? So let's have an interaction. Uh, okay, this is a, actually is a main discussion today. Right? Uh, this is a main theme, main trust uh, of the message today. Any any views? Anyone? Okay. Anyone have any uh, why why uh, the widow from Jeremiah were chosen? And why a uh, name was chosen instead of all the other uh, lepers in Israel? Any takers? Anyone? Then uh, Abia, for that's right. I'll take Abia. Anyone? I know to put it down, uh, you can have your own interpretation. There are many interpretations, but I'll share my view. Uh. Okay. Come. Let's have a moment of faith of our Esther. <laughs> I really love this one. Because of the idolatry, what sin of famine, 
with the land. Huh? Okay, the three and a half years rent the land. Huh? So at this particular uh, family, right? Sometimes people if they worship idol, huh? from a Christian, uh, they have a believer and then uh, follow his wife, huh? and then they, they, they have the adultery and the famine in the land. They experience dry spell in the land. They experience a lot of problems in the land because why? Right? They forsake God, right? They forsake God. They forsake God. That's why they are full of problems. Right, yesterday, uh, just to look at uh, Jeroboam, yesterday I was preaching to the youth, right? Jeroboam got in a chance though. His hand was triggered on the sea, the, the, the man of God tell him that God will, will destroy the altar of the uh, adultery altar, right? He said, see him, the moment his hand stretched out, he was triggered. And then he prayed for help, and God gave him no help to see him. But God gave him a second chance, right? But he had no treasure, and no, he still believed that he would eventually not wipe out the entire family. Right to King Baasha, right? He wiped out completely uh, uh, the family, Jeroboam the king, uh, or not even the king. Right? So there will be four problems. Uh. So anyway, just coming back to this, uh, as he was going to get it, and then he said, Bring me, please bring me another bread. Okay, family, you know, one drink is no problem. And then bread some more. Then he said, But you know, surely the Lord our God is. And she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jar. I'm gathering few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, then we will die. Okay, and Elijah said, Don't be afraid, go home and do as you have said. But first, make me a small loaf of bread and for, for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and a so my question is, uh, it is a family uh, country, uh, Israel, alright, the old lady, uh, the widow, uh, so poor, no? and only had the flour to make the last meal for herself and the son, uh, and yet the man of God said, hey, before you eat, uh, before everything, give me first, no? is he selfish? Was he very selfish? He said, hey, give me first, no? I need more than you. No? The woman said, who are you? You are already a prophet, right? But I want to die, you know, it's my last meal, it's still one. Uh. So do you think uh, Elijah, okay, how do you see the whole thing as you read the scripture? How do you see Elijah? Was he very selfish? And, uh, and then, uh, okay, was he very selfish uh, to ask, to give me first, before the widow and the uh, son? Was he very selfish or what other interpretation as you look at it? Anybody want to try? Come and respond. Anybody? Come. How about uh was pretty you know you must come. Elijah trust the Lord. Okay, Elijah trust the Lord to buy. They were about the perspective of the Say, hey, give me, you know. Hey, I, I only have my last meal, you still want my last meal before, you know. Right now. So Elijah will be God, yes, correct. He trusts the, the place, right? But just I say, why so many widows only going to choose a very poor widow who last year and die? The widow for Sorry? The widow for Okay, then. Yeah. Now there's a great principle we can learn it from this. So you see, the uh, widow obey, right? Okay. So Elijah was not selfish, right? In a sense, huh? Okay, he represents God. Because God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Okay, but I like my son, he say, uh, I say, this video, uh, wow, it is really, uh, uh, this is the most precious, uh, great, great sacrifice that uh, you know, gave to, to Elijah that represent God. And then what happened to her, uh, you know the story, right? You know the story, okay, let's look at, uh, okay, let's look at, uh, how I look at it, uh. And she was telling, she was, God was telling her faith, even the last meal she had to be born, uh, be her and die. By the way, I'm going to be great, you know, God, like Apostle Paul, uh, you know, he go everywhere by faith, you know. And he plant churches, you know, he plant mother, he's also good here. And then the Lord bless her country. So you want to be great and, and grow your faith, uh, you live this kind of life, okay? And uh, Apostle Paul, you live this kind of life, okay? And you dare to trust God, huh? If you dare to trust God, then God will dare to bless you. Much, many, many fold. 
you open the windows of heaven uh, and bless you until there's no room to contain the blessing. Right? In this case of the video we see now, eh? Alright? And similarly, God is testing our faith uh, to see if we will trust Him in her uh, to put His kingdom first above our own and personal and even family needs. So in this case, uh, she, she put God above her personal needs family needs to bring the son, right? He put God first, right? She really had the faith, okay? So the Bible says, he first the kingdom of God and righteous man, and all his thing right with us, okay? So this is faith, right? For this one, the Lord of God said, the jar of your flour will not be used up, and the jar of the oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sent rain on the land, right? Okay? When Elijah prayed, right? And it coincided with the will of God, right? So we reach a faith to trust God by giving the little that we have. He is able to bless her much more than uh, unlimited four. Alright? So we can see that uh, okay, uh, just to interject, okay, just very fast here. Uh, the Macedonians uh, they also enjoy as protein, they give as much as they can. Okay, and as we be for the privilege of sharing, uh, and they give themselves first to the Lord and then to and by the way of God to apostle and, and the team. Huh? So you can see they really have faith in Macedonia. And then what happened? God is able to bless us abundantly so that in all things, I like this verse, huh? so that at, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every word. And then you will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous in every way. How many believe this verse? This two verses. Okay, you believe and then you must end it out. But then to trust God, put God first and His kingdom, invest in His kingdom, then you experience this. Alright? Uh, just like Malachi, you pay your price, right? God opened the third gates of the window and bless him. Alright? So, in God's time, you will bless him. Okay? Not only in terms of material blessing, but spiritual blessing. You will grow in wisdom, grow in spirituality, and grow in power, in ministry, and all that. Alright? And now, is able to do immeasurably more than what we imagine as for according to his power that is working in the church. Huh? So this is the, the, the thing. Huh? And then, uh, okay, so, alright, so God is able to tell about the story, there's not a video later I share, huh? is that uh, she had, she had uh, the, put together water, you know, for the next, uh, next period, uh, as long as until God sent the rain, right? So during that period, and then the the, the, the joy and the right? That means there's a miracle. She experienced miracles in her life and the great blessings of God. So same thing uh, when you have the faith which trust God, uh, your water will never run dry. Your jump will never run dry, your oil will never run dry, your flower will never run dry. There will always be abundant blessing. Blessing and a blessing is so much more than you can be and reach other in so many ways. In terms of knowledge, wisdom, and financial giving and support to others and to the church, you can be a great blessing. God can do that. Alright? So, this is a very powerful verse, and I'm saying it night. It's very powerful. We don't be always in poor poverty. Poverty is a curse, right? We don't believe in poverty. Alright? We believe in blessing. Okay? But we are not prosperity preaching. We are not. We are not because uh, prosperity preaches about you have to suffer. But we believe in suffering. Suffering means not our foolishness that you sacrifice, you know that you are risk to become poor so that others can be used. Others we call suffering, right? We live, we live suffering. Alright? So if you're not prosperity teaching, the one is a uh, gospel, uh, you say God bless you, bless you. You have to suffer because Jesus suffered all for you already. Alright? This is wrong teaching, uh, heresy. Alright? This teaching is wrong. Uh, when you come from testing and trial, you fall flat and you go back to the world and you die. Okay? So this is wrong teaching. Right? Okay, let's move on. And you know Jesus will not entrust himself to, to them, right? Because these people who because God knew what was in man, right? And they come to Jesus not because of the sign he performed, but because of the ache and low and hard feel. And one category of Christians are they come to church. They come to God just because of the blessing. God bless me. Material blessing. And bless me, bless me. Okay, but not about suffering. Not about partnership with God's kingdom. Okay, they are just, they're quite peaceful Christian. 
Then the fish and the bread, right? The fish will go Christian or hamburger will go Christian, right? So you don't want the God doesn't want the kind of Christian, right? They are not true Christian, huh? Okay, and when tough time comes, you will, you, will, you will give up the faith, huh? Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. so God the one this kind of Christian, uh, like the, the Israelite, yeah. okay, they, they arose and got angry because uh, I know that people 20 years old and above they died in the wilderness after the death of the okay, and uh, not born except Caleb and Joshua, okay, because it's trust God, huh? and the Lord anger went against Israel and made them wander the wilderness for 40 years until the whole generation was brought up. Okay. And God said, uh, don't work for food that goes back to the food that endures the last thing in life. Huh? Okay, let's move on to the story again. So she went away and did as Elijah told her. And so there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and the family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jar of oil did not run right in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Okay, I want you to know this story and yeah. for this story and yeah. why God chose a widow. Uh, I said already, okay, God method is a man and a woman whose heart is after him. The king, King David, God is crowned in one day. Uh, that is uh, Elijah and uh, uh, Uriah and Bathsheba, right? Case. But the thing is, God foreknowledge and uh, foresee that this widow will do what uh, Elijah told her to do, right? So God is looking for this type of woman, widow. Alright, God is looking for a man a widow of this nature who will obey him to do his good in spite of the difficulties in their life, their poverty, etc. Yet they still trust God. And then eventually they are blessed. Alright? So God is looking for this kind. We want this kind of widow in the church. We want this kind. We will become partners with God's kingdom. And partners with us. We are willing to serve and give to God's kingdom to build this family and have faith, this kind of faith in, uh, in, in God. Eh? Right? So God, for knowledge, we know that this widow, that's why our so many widow only choose this one. Okay? Out of so many God choose you, so you must thank God for it. Eh? Okay, and let's go to the story of uh, Naaman. Okay. Naaman, eh? alright, he was a Syrian general. And then the Arabian met the king. And then the, the staker walked under, under him. Okay, and told him that, hey, the prophecy I can go to this prophet can do you. Right? So the OG, he listened, huh? Eh? Okay, so he's a man open, my mind open. You see, I am a general, you're a staker, who are you? All right, he's not in this mentality. Okay, he's open to sound advice, huh? Eh? Okay, not, by the way, not everybody can accept sound teaching and right teaching because they want to hear what we want to hear, alright? And so there, there were many uh, in Israel, a leprosy right at the time of Elijah the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman. Okay, let's go on. Huh? A lot of people, okay, let's move on, but she said to the Israel, if only my master will see the prophet who is Samaria and will cure his leprosy. And then they go to the king, and then he prepare one of they give a lot of money, right? 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 sets of clothing. Alright? And then, the left then the... So, and then, they go to Elijah, Elijah to cut the story short, huh? And that's cheap, huh? Then go all the way... Let's go away to verse 8, huh? When Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel, okay, they go to him. Okay, let's go to verse 9. So, Naaman went, with the horses and chariot, and stopped at the door of Elijah's house. And Elijah sent a messenger to say, Go wash your seven times in the river Jordan, and your flesh will be restored and you will be healed. But Naaman went away very angry. He said, I thought he would surely come and be there and stand and call the name of the Lord, where he sent over the spot and cure. By the way, uh, he thought of his own way for God to do it unknown. We have to allow God to work in this way. Yeah? I don't know how God worked when uh, first Paul family, right? Uh, many years ago, right? And uh, he once with us, he baptized, right? And how on earth that day he went to meet Jason. And I wonder, you know, that day you know, he's, he will stay in Sambawang, and your mother stay in UP, right? And then, 
Okay, so when you are not at all, not all you are still in Chotka, that's why you were there and coffee. But actually, it, it was not, no. So I was thinking at a day, as I say, I, I, I'm not supposed to walk there, but, okay, but because of the sun, too hot. So I think short, I take a longer route. I went through, I went through, I went, and first, first, first phrase, when you say two years, you right? And then, uh, and I didn't give him my number, right? I said, you can call, you look at the church, and then you call out the church. And then uh, call me, right? And they said, I'm not So he took the extra step huh, to call out the church, and then here we are, he came. So praise God, he tried to reach out. I was a uh, I said, he tried to reach out to not only the parents, uh, the Jeremy, and all your family, and maybe slowly later on, uh, until I clean, uh, we bring them back to the Lord. Uh, right? So, so this is a start. Uh. See how the world works. Uh. Now the Lord's bring you all back. Uh. The last week I confirmed with you, so you want to go back to that religion and say no, right? Because the path is not, that one is not gone. Eh? Alright, so uh, this, is a, this is a good start, good beginning. Let's uh, move on from here and trust God and we pray along with you all. And then we go together and build God's kingdom together. Go at your home and time and go and come back to the Lord. But I believe that uh, uh, online, online YouTube only is as very well. They know that it is not open the doors for physical life, right? which should come on site, which is uh, okay, a bit of data, right? So it is better because, you know, there are many online Christians, uh, and sometimes call YouTube Christians. Uh, after the COVID, they don't go back to church. They don't go back. They're so comfortable. And then they, they don't feel that fellowship physically. But that was that's not for sin, not the of us together. It's a bit of us together. Alright? Uh, okay, uh, physically. Alright? Not just uh, online. Online is an option by uh, I think we should come on site. Okay, that is the, it is the best option. Huh? Alright? So, uh, it's more powerful in okay, the ministry in terms of the personality. Okay, and then how about come up online, God can do wonders, uh, but, you know, uh, because there are other aspects of the uh, non-verbal communication, the 60% are uh, online, you cannot uh, visualize the part, okay? The communication techniques are uh, 40% of the verbal, 60% of the non-verbal message, alright? So it's a whole thing, so it's more powerful, in a sense, uh, okay? And so, he, 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 at first he grumbled, he said, why this dirty river, but the other rivers are better, right? Okay, and so he went on, but then he listened to his servants, alright? And he was to be trees. Also, there are three traits that we can learn from this man. He's humble. He was humble. This one. He was humble, humility, and he was teachable, and he was a good man. He's a great man, no? Very humble. So, one thing that God gives you is you must be humble, you must be teachable, and then you must be obedient, 100% is obedient. Uh, not 99%, uh, because King Asa, he did not completely destroy the high faces. He didn't. Although he did many good things, but still not good enough. Because, right, uh, of course, uh, the enemy is not, not that good. Uh, he died, he sees in his feet and he died. Right? Although he was good, he was a good king, but still not good enough. Let us be perfect, okay, as he wants us to be perfect, right? In love, huh? Let's go all the way and pour out for Jesus. You know, I have this thought, uh, perfect learn, cast out fear, right? Okay, uh, that's as an uh, interpretation. And it's a very powerful verse, and I like this very much. Uh, God bless you, uh, yes, some of you. Come, uh, God, explain to us, perfect learn, cast out fear. What's your idea with that? Yeah, if we have perfect love for God, uh, are we trusting God's perfect love? Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't have to fear anything. Yeah. You can bet your life on it. Yeah, very good. You can step your life. You can step your life and tell God uh, and you don't have to fear anything because when you die, God knows. And if any bird, be, uh, if you, if you, your life will be taken away, you must leave God's permission. Even the bird uh, to fall down also leave God's permission. So you don't need to scare. But then, like, as of your need, go all the way to serve God the Apostle Paul. No need to fear about your future and all that. When I first started uh, as a missionary, uh, you know, I gave up my, my so-called uh, uh, group for spec in the army. I was an army officer, right? I was offered to sign on, but I didn't come to the opportunity. So I went to mission field, and they talked about money. Okay, they only gave me 
different colors around in India. Alright? How you survive? In those days, you can survive. Uh, you know, in, uh, in India, you can survive. You can still give your father uh, 10%. You can also give your mom 10%. Alright? Uh, not 10%, how much did you have? I don't know, $100. Alright? And then I give 10% to the church for mom. Alright? So, how is $70 I left? Alright? How do you think I still can survive? Alright? Of course, God also blessed along the way. You know, until today, you know, I don't know what the future holds. My, my heart is just to serve God and bless God. When it comes to buying a marriage, and somebody sent me a check of 10,000. When my children born, go to Maui, and then somebody sent a check of 12,000. And also, the doctor gives free. It's like a friend, right? And so many things free. Then, you know, come to buy a house, now I stay in a five room flat, right? And where the money comes from. You know, you don't see all this now. The Lord bless somehow. You need to have faith. And today, alright, my daughter graduated already, fully paid uh, the fee in the university. My son graduated also fully paid. Now going to America also fully paid the fee. Yeah. Where the money comes from? The Lord bless. So you cannot imagine all this, uh, but you have one way, one step. Uh, you will have to trust God. If there's a trust God, the best thing will How many dare to trust God? You must dare to trust God. Don't be afraid. God speak, the universe come. Huh? So you must know who is God. Huh? I say, yeah, when you draw, when you are away from God, I can't see. The aeroplane are too far, you must see. Because you are so far from God. For a reason, the aeroplane. When you draw near to God, the journey is see through the window, you see nothing, you see nothing. So when you are near to God, the God is so big. Right? So the closer we are, the bigger God is. And then you can really know who God is. And you are willing to stick your right hand, go all around for it, and never turn back and look back. Okay? So you must have faith. Okay? But not many people have faith. It's that kind of faith. Huh? Okay? You need to grow in that kind of faith. You must dare to launch out for God and dare to trust God. Right? And God will give you the way. Okay, let's move on. Okay, let's move on very fast. And, uh, and then after that, you want to give money to Naaman, right? To go. I know even uh, Elisha, he said, I will not accept him. How do you know a man of God? You see his life. This case, he can be very rich. No? He said, no, no, you are riches. Right? He do it for free. Apostle Paul preached for free, right? Uh, you can see these are really men of God. You can see that the people who preach, uh, and then they buy a private aeroplane, a uh, private jet, and they live in a mansion. Uh, so you have to question whether they are living. Right? So, a man of God is a man of faith. Of course, you can still live in a comfortable home now. But this, the, the question is to achieve. Okay, uh, they are wise people. Okay, let's move on. And they got up, see the thing, eh? they got up, they listened to what Jesus said, right? About the layman and the widow, he said. They got up, they drove, they drove him out of the town and he took him to the ground of the hill on which he was built in order to throw him down. You can see? He preached, eh? they cannot accept his preaching. So what they do, they want to throw it down. Okay? A lot of people cannot accept sound teaching. Cannot. There are many Christians who cannot accept sound teaching. Even pastors cannot accept sound teaching. Alright? You know my interaction with them. Right? I feel that uh, they cannot they cannot see. Alright? Even though they can be pastor. Alright? But the question is that uh, you need to have the wisdom of God. You know? Somehow the Lord will show you. If you sacrifice. If uh, you want to really understand how you must have told us. Because that's why you can identify with Jesus to be here. Because Jesus crucified down on the cross and we must also lay down our life. Okay, in order to experience the, the, the depth of uh, the way is to is to set suffering and sacrifice. Only love is the way to be effective and bring people to the kingdom of God. Love is the key. Alright? The life of love to, to set people free. Okay, with the power of love. So love is deep. If you don't live a second picture, you cannot understand God's uh, way of doing things. You cannot understand. Because you're not inside, you're not immersed in the, the culture of the kingdom, in the way of the kingdom. Okay, come here to God and He will come to you. you. Must be more and more committed in cell group, in discipleship, in evangelism, in sharing, in any aspect of ministry you will serve. And all who are willing. Okay, God is choosing people who are willing men and women, 
Okay, K can drop to go, right? Uh, during uh, this uh, 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 this uh, Moses time, right? Okay, the field of the tabernacle and so on. Huh? And then God also shows those who start reading, uh, okay, in the Old Testament, okay, uh, Hezekiah time. And then, uh, these are the Israelites. Uh, everyone who has God has known, prepared to grow up and build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem as well. So, this is a very powerful person whose heart God has moved. So, if God has not moved, we can't move. Okay, we can initiate the test and come, but somehow they are not ready. Or they are not ready. We cannot make it. It's only those who have God and touch and move, then we can come. Because God is building the church. His way, not my way, not your way, but God's way. Alright, let God do it His way. Alright? So, okay, lastly, uh, this one is my favorite, huh? last time we then we will close. Colossians huh? 2 1. And Paul is a uh, reference to the pastor, the primary pastor of the church. And Paul was in prison. And he asked Paul for advice. And Paul gave the advice. So I want you to know that how I am contending for you. Okay, and those that you see around. Okay, and my goal is that they may arrange and they come in heaven in love. So that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God in whom are hidden all the treasure of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you that no one may see it. Okay, in conclusion, I have a final piece. Okay, I have been sharing and it's not easy to understand this verses. My question is, how can you be blessed and be God all the treasure of wisdom and knowledge? What is the key to have all the treasure of wisdom and knowledge? What's the key for, for these four verses? And especially the uh, verse 2 to verse, verse 3. What's the key? All us we have or to be seen, to grow. All the truth. I mentioned before, I don't know where it gets, so it's very important to mention here. Huh? Okay, let's have some input. Huh? Someone would like to share and their goals and dreams? A bit prayer, of course. Come, let's hear from Emily again, our mission. How can we, in what can we access to God hidden treasure, all the hidden treasure of wisdom and knowledge, based on verse 2 and 3? And you interpret in your own words, huh? okay, you're not so obvious. I mean, you got some clue are there. Huh? How can we access to all the treasure in this world? Anyone? Anyone raise their hand? Anybody? It's free for all. <laughs> okay. Because it's very important, though. that's why I repeat again. Huh? Why right? Michelle
love with God and mm -hmm. receive from God. Mm -hmm. They enter in love with their fellow members, mm -hmm. they can they teach or share the gospel, then they can also accept the truth. So, fast through. Okay. Okay, uh, closer now, right? Uh, he is saying that united in love with God and the fellow believers, and then God will give you the, 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 the wisdom and the knowledge. Okay, any, 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 any add, add value anymore? Anyone? Any value anymore? Okay. Okay, uh, alright, you really you got trust in your contact. Okay. Okay, we hear different views. I'm good. Okay, I can share my view. Uh. Okay, uh, okay, basically, uh, uh, united in love, okay, there's a theme there. I see it this way. Uh. Okay, in, in order to show that you love God, right, you must love others. Not only yourself, do it. Everybody, let's say in the church, everybody in the church do it. Uh. Okay, and uh, personally and corporately, uh, okay, when you show that you love God, uh, by loving others and moving all the Christian groups the same thing for God. Uh, as you do it, uh, you mo more mobilize them uh, uh, to love God to, by loving others. Right? When you do that, uh, the key is that when you love God, uh, you are united in love uh, so that you may have a full nature. So that must be the key in love. How you demonstrate this love? You must love others. Uh, to show that you love God and only yourself are mobilized to motivate others to love God as well, collectively, alright? Then you will have the full features of complete understanding to know the mystery of God. In Jesus Christ, where you have the treasure of wisdom, of all wisdom, uh, and here all the treasure of wisdom, and so God is a key to unlock the wisdom of God. That's why you must suffer and sacrifice, and not only that, it will prevent you from deception from God for free. Okay? So you will not be deceived by wrong teaching. Alright? It's very important. So you must walk closely with God huh? and love is the key to bless God's eternal kingdom. Amen? So in conclusion, I believe this day I'm sharing that God is looking for a man and a woman of faith. Alright? And you want to bless, you want to use a man and a woman okay, to partner with him. And give you the wisdom, you give you the wisdom and the knowledge you need, the power you need to bless this kingdom, to grow this kingdom. And as you, you do it for God, you don't worry about your future. You take care of your future. You give you wisdom how to take care of your future. You bring in people, you mobilize anyway, these people are everywhere to bless you. Okay, open doors and for you, doors of blessing, job, making money, opportunity, going to wisdom good family, etc. Everything perfect. We will bless you. Give you a faith. Amen? So today you are here say, God, I want to want to have, want to, uh, have faith in you and also and uh, I don't want to have faith in you but I also want to love you more. Okay? I want to love you more by loving others. I love you in the sacrifice of the Okay, if you have any desire, okay, I'm going to pray for you. I ask, not really ask you to raise your hand, I ask you to come out and I'll pray for you as the song is going on. Okay, anyone want to demonstrate your love God? Okay, who else? Besides? 